Hi everyone, Chef from Outdoors in the Low Countries. Now I want to do some really serious digging into dirt. And as you all might know, digging with a spade works very well when you have loose ground. But when it's very filled with stones and roots and other stuff, then with a spade you tend to get, you continuously hit rocks you doesn't go through. So when you want to go through something that is very filled with rocks and roots and branches and all type of dirt, then the best way to do that is with a rake. So I used the bucket on the Kubota already for uh, cleaning up some dirt and it didn't, didn't go the way I liked it because uh, the bucket was continuously hitting something and it didn't really want to go in. So I really want to have some digging rakes. And uh, of course you can buy a, a grapple, uh, but a grapple is not going really deep into the ground. It's more meant for only a small uh, layer and more to grab things than to really dig it up. So I was not able to find anything that is matching the Kubota front loader. So I still had some material left, 15 mm thick plate that I also used to create a rhino root ripper. And I also created a rake for digging, so it's the rake digger. So as mentioned, this is all scrapyard material, the welding plate I bought online, and this is also scrapyard material, so I all uh, did it with a uh, limited amount of costs, but uh, some welding and some uh, laser cutting. So I will uh, show you how I created the rake digger, I also will show you some first impressions, so have fun. The width of the back of the Kubota is 135 centimeters, so we will make the rake the same width as the bucket, both 135 centimeters. shape that I prefer. The rake, the rakes themselves need to be attached to a strong beam. Now all of this is made from scrapyard material except the welding plate. This is a bobcat welding plate that I bought online. Uh, as mentioned also uh, when I uh, discussed the video on the root ripper the Rhino Ripper, uh, I really like this welding plate. It's 6 mm, it's uh, reinforced and the interface is at the bottom. It has a very strong top 12 mm ridge to, uh, to have the, 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 the lifting. So it's, I really like that. Now I can have the width of the rake digger uh, at exactly the same width as the interface plate. But I decided to make it a little bit longer. Now it has just the same width as the bucket has. And the advantage is that it's the same width as the bucket because I like to loosen up with the rake and scrape it up with the bucket. That's one advantage. But another advantage is that I can now have a little bit of a side view when I put the rake exactly at the edge. And that's what I intend to do. So then when I sit at my Kubota, I can just look at where the sides are digging. And that's what I prefer. The the interface of the Kubota, the front loader, is connected here and the 
the, the bottom part of that will stick out a little bit underneath. Now with the digger I will really go into the ground. So to protect the Kubota front loader I will have this strong beam, this strong construction uh, going around it so that it will always shield the front loader interface from whatever I'm trying to dig up. Now this is a very strong construction. The rigs will be attached, welded to with this strong beam. Now I need to connect this very strong beam to the welding plate. Now that's where I use these uh, angle profiles for, also thick material. This is 18 mm high, 2 times 18 mm, thickness of 8 mm. This is 71 mm, 71 mm with a thickness of 7.5 mm. So this is quite a rigid construction. With the root ripper I had a very strong interface plate in the middle with one backside stiffener. Uh, now there are multiple rigs, so now I will have two backside stiffeners making a very distributed uh, stiff construction attached towards the welding plate which is attached towards the front loader. To protect the interfaces of the Kubota I will also add a front plate uh, it's not so much for stiffening, but more to protect it from getting dirt and other stuff getting towards the interfaces. those rakes install these beams then I can really make sure that they are all aligned in the same angle and they are all aligned properly. So this is the outer rake and when there's going to be a load on it there will be a torch on the construction. Now this is an open construction at the end, and an open construction is not very stiff for torsion. So what I will do is I will add a piece like this and also one on the edge. So then I will make it a closed construction. And a closed construction is much stiffer for torsion than an open construction. Because it can just bend open. But when it's closed, that's not possible anymore, and that's why it's much stiffer for torsion. First test. Let's get the boot on. So in this video I showed you how I created the rake digger. It's really meant to loosen stuff up so I can pick it up with the bucket uh, or to remove big stones or roots, things that are let's say into the ground. When they're really like a stump you really need to have the rhino root ripper which is really ripping it up piece by piece. This is more to loosen it up and to take it off the ground, take it, uh, to take it out of the ground. So uh, there are six large blades, 15 millimeter thick, so they're really cutting into the ground. 
and I, uh, I think it works well. So when I tested the device, it all works well. It's strong, it's fairly stiff. That's also what I like because I don't want to uh, get some, uh, some bending and some tearing open, uh, things like that. It has to be stiff to really uh, uh, last for quite some time. I'm not worrying that something is getting deformed or something like that. Uh, the only thing of course you need to do is always be careful not to bend your uh, the front loader, but uh, it's stiff so I don't worry about that. So the only thing now left to do is uh, give it first a primer and then put it into a nice Kubota orange. But that's the next step. So, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching. See you next time.